you know, as a modern people, we're just really obsessed with comfort. At any time that that comfort could go away, to toy with discomfort and see what you're actually capable of is kind of important as a human. What happens when you get to a place where you're able to like scrape away all the bullshit and get rid of all the stuff like worrying about your appearance and how, what people think of you and all that stuff. If you can like wipe all that stuff away and get to like the bottom and see what's there. I wanna see like if I am made of tough stuff. I've run quite a few hundred milers at this point. I wanted to run one unsupported just to see if I could do it by myself. And the plan for 2020 was to always work on FKTs, which is fastest known time. Last fall, kind of the last project I had was to run what I call the Warner Parks 100, where I ran 100 miles unsupported in Percy Warner Park. So I did that in preparation for the FKTs I was going to do this summer. And so I learned a lot this summer just on, you know, how many calories can I, can I carry safely on me? How minimal I can get my clothing to still be safe layers for weather. So I, I did Bigfoot 200, um, really similar terrain to the Smoky Mountains. I just really like that, that distance. I know that's insane to say, but I started looking this year and there's not a 200 miler in the Southeast. This is the uh, fourth running of the No Business 100. We're set up in this beautiful area of Pickett State Park, the Big South Fork area here in uh, northern kind of Tennessee into Kentucky. Back when COVID really hit in the spring, I think a lot of us had no idea what things would look like come fall, and, and we tried to stay positive and there was some doubt, like, are we going to be able to do this? We saw a lot of races canceling. We had to make uh, some changes, some guidelines and policies to put in place to make sure that we kept everybody safe, but things worked out. Brian is just, you know, a class act. Like, he does a really good job with the race. Um, it's one of the best, especially in the Southeast. When people were coming out here and settling, the area, Kind of down by the river, they dubbed no business. Legend is that uh, they felt they had no reason settling in the area just because of the harsh terrain and conditions here. So it's also an old mining community. So you'll you'll see coal across the trail. You'll also see even old rail cars out there in some places. We're kind of fortunate we're able to put on a full loop 100 mile race, uh, and every year we reverse the course. One year he'll go clockwise, the, the next year he'll go counterclockwise. And so I said, you know, it'd be cool to do that twice in a row and make it a 200 miler. If you run the course in both directions, we give you like a special 200 mile buckle. Jason kind of approached me this year with the idea of, of doing that, but in one push. So I kind of dubbed it the no-no. Jason will be the first ever to attempt running the race in both directions in one push. I think I've got everything I need. A little nervous. That's, I think I should be nervous. Two pancakes. One cup of coffee. My first 100 mile race, uh, I wanted to quit in the middle. The aid station I wanted to quit at, the guy basically told me, you know, you can quit, but I'm, you know, I, I can't drive you out of here till like tomorrow afternoon. And so I was like, well, I'm not gonna do that. So I just, you know, I knew that the next aid station was gonna be breakfast, like the sun was gonna be up. I knew that they would have coffee and pancakes there. So I got this mantra in my head that I said, no matter what happens when I get there, I'm gonna have two pancakes and one cup of coffee. I don't care if they say that I can only have one pancake, I'm gonna have two. My dad's gonna be there and he'll say like, no, it's okay for him to have two. And so I just, that was my repetition, like two pancakes, one cup of coffee. Aside from a handful of meetups with his crew, Jason will be on his own for the first hundred miles. No aid stations, no pacer. He'll begin his first clockwise loop on Wednesday night. The plan is to finish his first 100 miles in time to start his second counterclockwise loop along with the official No Business 100 start on Friday morning. All right. All right. We're so proud. We'll see you on the other side. See you guys.
Bye, Jason. Love you. Bye, Bye you're going to be great. First sunrise. Yo. Made it through night number one. And the sun's coming up. And Lori's with me for a six mile loop at Blue Heron. And then come back to the car and maybe have some breakfast. Maybe take a nap. Oh my gosh. Yeah. This is incredible. When Jason and I did marriage counseling, like before we got married, like I told him that I was nervous about marrying Jason because I was afraid that he would take me on an adventure or something that would make me uncomfortable. And he was like, so do you think he, he would like leave you there? And I was like, no, not necessarily that. But I think that Jason is the type of person that he's going to constantly push the boundaries. And I think he wants other people to be able to see that same success in themselves. I'm not saying that everybody should go out and run ultra marathons but I think that they should push their limits. You know? he's, he's actually been really good for me as far as that goes, like to push myself a little bit more physically. I mean, he kind of got me into rock climbing even though I was terrified of heights. That's how I want to inspire people is, is not necessarily to like say like, oh, like you should, you should run these races, but just to say that, you know, you, you can be way stronger than you think that you are. And you can, you can do a lot of things that you, you wouldn't think that you would be able to do. Hello, good up, bro? I've already started hearing stuff tonight. It gets worse the less, the less I sleep. Right now it's just like, in the wind, it's a distant conversation. Hey, I missed you too. How are you? You doing okay? Good. Hello, dog. <laughs> Hi, buddy. How are you doing? How's it going? I've been running for 24 hours. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what do you need? Uh, just to sit for now. Right. You got enough water? I drank most of it. Okay. Uh, is this all you've eaten? Uh, let me get it. Yeah. Jason, oh. Michael. I don't feel like There's some people backpacking. And I'm like a little bit loopy. And they have like a, a black plastic bag that they hung for their bear bag. And also a green dry sack. And it looks just like a witch in a tree. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was like, I know that that's not, that can't be a witch. <laughs> and it wasn't. There was a section that I was not expecting. It's really hard. It's like really steep climbs and it's on horse trails. So it's like sandy and you can't really get your, your footing. I haven't slept at all yet, so. I love the organizing, the planning, the every detail, the deciding what I think his pace might be and deciding what time I think he might come into an aid station. It makes me very happy when he meets those projected goals that I've created. But other than that, everything's went, went pretty well. I think I've made all my times that I was yeah, yeah. shooting for. Mm -hmm. Based on what I've been doing, I think that I can make the cutoffs of the race. Oh yeah. There. I'd like to get some night nights. There, here. before you start here, yeah. Uh -huh. The two things you have to worry about are nutrition and water, and then you have, with the 200 miler you have to add sleep. At Bigfoot, it wasn't quite as cold. It was in August, and so I was able to just lay down on the side of the trail and take a nap. I had no business. It was in the low 30s. I was afraid to lay down, like that. I, you know, thinking I might not, might not wake back up. You know? Okay. 
What time do you think I should leave here? Okay, well, so it's it's almost nine now, right? Mm. Sleep for two hours. <clears throat> and then get up and finish it up. And turn around and come back. Stop! <laughs> Aren't you it? No, he's we digging on it. Hey, why don't you get in this here? I think it's warm. The, the, uh, this is cold. Yeah. The plan was to sleep there for two hours, but it was just, I maybe, maybe fell asleep for 45 minutes and then I was just restless after that. Like I just couldn't, couldn't really get any sleep. And so, you know, finally I just okay. was just like, I'm just going to get up and, and start running again. Started second night. Um, walking to get my body moving. And training. It's midnight. I feel pretty good. Got like 18 miles to see crew. And hopefully it'll stop raining soon. When I left Bandy Creek, I had the GPX file on my phone so I could follow it. But the problem is when you would get to a trail junction, I knew which way going back was that was clearly marked. Once I finally saw Amber in the morning, she was like, what happened? Like, why did it take you three hours to do six miles? And I was like, well, I got lost like five times. That's when I was just really out of it, really sleepy. Like I was headed up some switchbacks that were going up to Twin Arches. I guess I like sort of fell asleep and I kind of like woke up standing there looking down this like drainage ditch thinking like where where am i like what is this and and once i turned around and looked behind me i saw the the switchback and i realized like oh okay i'm on the trail and i need to keep going that way but who knows how much time i wasted just standing there looking looking down this drainage ditch trying to figure out what it was you know we'll walk over we're pretty good a little stiff but not not crazy I feel better than i did this morning I uh, got pretty hypothermic last night. Oh, on the verge of hypothermia. I had a really rough time. That night I had gotten lost so many times. I, I may have been over 100 at that point. It, I think it took him a little bit longer than we had anticipated because we got there really early. The sun had come up and he was walking down the road. He looked so pale. Do you remember what you said to Amber and Amy? Yeah, I asked him if I was going to die. <laughs> I don't think I've been scared like that in in the woods ever because I thought if I get hurt, if I fall, it's it's so cold and I'm so close to hypothermia that I don't, I don't know if I'll make it out. I just didn't have enough layers. I didn't have enough clothing. By the time I got to them, like I had already quit in my mind. I think I even like gave him some choices. Like, why don't you just take a 10 minute nap and then you can eat this and then maybe you can go try to do this short distance. He was like, I don't know if that's a good idea. And I was like, why am I here? <laughs> I'm here to make these decisions for you because you're not in the right mind. I think you're gonna be fine. She got all my wet clothes off of me, put me in a sleeping bag. 15 or 20 minutes later, I started to realize that I wasn't gonna die <laughs> and that was okay. And I, I've seen him and in some bad spots and I just didn't feel like this was the worst he had ever been. About 10 years ago now, I had an accident. My first love was rock climbing. And that was, that used to be the thing that I thought about all the time. Like that's what I, if I had spare time, I wanted to, to rock climb. I was climbing with Amber um, at the Red River Gorge in Kentucky. It was the last day of our trip. Like it had been my fall break. So we had had a good week of climbing. We were gonna come home on that Monday, but we had some extra time. My thought was when we got, got to the crag, it's cold, we should just leave and go get breakfast. And I, that's what we should have done. You know, like I should have listened to that, that inner voice. The first route he got on and he like backed off and was like, oh, this is not a good idea. I started to climb a route and I probably got 20 feet up and I, I backed off from it. Then he went over to the next route and he got on it, climbed up. I climbed um, about 40 feet up on, a, on an easy crack and just didn't place enough protection. I was climbing safely, I just, just hadn't put in enough pieces below me. 
for a solid year after it happened. Every time I would close my eyes, I could imagine him falling. I fell all the way to the ground. Um, I landed on my feet. Like I can, I can imagine him like sitting down on that boulder and like looking at his foot and it's turned sideways and like, oh shit, like what am I gonna do? Like, Clearly broke my left leg really, really bad. Um, I could just, you could just see, it wasn't compound, like there were no bones sticking out, but it was just, the, my, my leg was just a bag, bag full of bones. What do I have to do? Like, can I stay calm enough to figure this out to get us to safety and- She kind of freaked out and said, what do, you know, what do we do? And I was like, well, you gotta, you're gonna have to go get help. Luckily I was close to the road and it wasn't a, like, wasn't a crazy rescue, but they did take me out on a litter. I had to get surgery, I have a, um, a tibial nail, like, where they drove all the way through my bone. There's there's screws in my knee and my ankle. I was in a wheelchair for a couple weeks. You know, if my leg was not outstretched, I was in excruciating pain. It taught us a lot about the adventures that we have. Like, one of the things now is, is both of us. As a family, any time that it doesn't feel right, we're calling it. Like that's that's the rule. Like if it just doesn't feel feel good, we're always like, we can we can have an adventure another day. You know, like let's back it off. Yeah, on you all night, right? Yeah, I almost quit this morning, but Amber didn't let me. She never oh. does. Were you able to stay warm? No. Oh man. I guess I should start. You have to help to start. Yeah, but I want the extra time. <laughs> Every five to seven miles in the actual race, there's an aid station. There is a time limit of 35 hours. Um, so the, the second loop, I do have to finish within a certain amount of time. I hope I can make your cutoffs. I think you'll be okay. We've got a lot of time. Yeah. It's, a, it's a legit course. It is. Yeah. That last climb before Duncan, Duncan Hollow, I was like, yeah, fuck yeah. you, Brian. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You got this, man. Hey, there's two things you need to know. Uh, the first thing is, don't say you got this. 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 I know I do. And the second is, don't let me quit. I'd like to run 100 miles, please. change whether it's good or bad so like if he comes in feeling bad in a couple of minutes things could be happy again if he comes in feeling good in a couple of minutes it could all be a shit show okay i'm doing the killian method of taking my shoes off with this creek crossing might be a bad idea but last night getting my shoes wet is what Got me hypothermic. Actually, it feels pretty good. Have it, dry shoes. Your battery is charged. Too. Cool. So you have both. All right. I'm gonna try and get out of here. Yeah, good, job. Good, good job. Good job. Okay, please. Two towel. Yes, 
have a leave if you need it. Okay. 18. Back to you guys, right? Do you want anything on the table over there? I think I'm good. Actually, it's probably a little less than eight chips and stuff. Do you want anything like that? Uh, protein bars. I would take a bag of Doritos. Bag of Doritos? That's, that's insane. Yeah. You want any of these? I'm glad you guys are here. I didn't think you would be. Of course we're here. You look like you're feeling a lot better. You feel good? Not white hurt. Yeah. Oh. What are you going to do? Let's, um, have you been stretching? Dr. Ask. I'm trying, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Dr. Amy Doctor How said. How does it feel? I mean, it hurts, but it feels better. Could be that. You're just like, now it feels like it's a knot. How, many, how long will it be for till the next? About 17 miles. If you want a couple more common to take, you can take it again in four hours. Sure. Okay. All right. I love you guys. Okay. Love you. Love you. Okay. Over halfway. Even though it's a gravel road. It's a really pretty evening. I've had a really solid day today. And that sounds funny because I've ran five marathons. But just really nice weather that helps. And about 26 miles into the second loop. And coming up on uh, Bandy Creek campground. So I'll spend a little time there and hang out with the crew. It's like five minutes late. Yep. I feel good. Yeah, I feel really good. The temperature today helps. No serious issues. Still that nagging in my my leg, but I have mental clarity today. Congrats. I would like a uh, Gore-Tex jacket. Okay. Engineer. I got the case of D, you buddy. Um, you, you want? Hi, how you doing? Uh, what's the cutoff here? Eight, eight fifteen. Yeah, I don't want to take too much time. Yeah. But, Have you been uh, trying those stretches at all? Yeah. Oh, it's hard to like. It's hard to do it on running too. Point to which leg hurts. <laughs> 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 which leg are we gonna cut off? Yeah, we need... okay. Ooh, no, yeah. The last aid station I went into, they go. We've been waiting for you. <laughs> and I was like, oh yeah, my last? And they're like, no. Nah. They're like, they said you already done it once. <laughs> and now you're gonna do it twice? Twice. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yep. And they're like, man, that's crazy. <laughs> they just kept asking me all these questions. So I feel like unless I just shit the bed, I would be okay. I think so. Yeah. This okay? Yeah. Okay, good. You're you're gonna have to like maintain. Yeah, I think I can. I mean that that one section is gonna be hard, but I think he yeah. accounts for that. You feeling strong yeah. about going through the night? Good job. Yeah. Uh, I mean tonight's the night where it gets weird. Yeah. So I'll probably see you in around eleven hours. Mm -hmm. Wow. I'll put him in my. Let me take it. Ah. That's a hurting foot. <laughs> uh, hey Amy, come look yeah. at this. Yep. Yeah, I got that again. So, dealer's choice, do you want it to stay like that? Do you normally let them be, or we do you usually pop them? Pop them. Yeah, okay. let's I'm do fine it. with that. Yeah. Okay, cool. It's the worst so we can have happen. an infection, but we'll catch it early. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we just cut it off, it's, in a, it's a nuisance. It'll be no, fine. No surgery during the race. Oh, the good news, I confirmed, I'm still in first place. Yeah. We talked about that earlier. Yeah. You're also in last. Uh, yeah, we talked about could spin it either way. All right, we gotta go. <laughs> All right, guys. Jason, I'll see you in the morning, buddy. Okay. We'll see ya. Have a good night. Ah, yeah. You guys. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think I could, I, you know, I can mentally push through most things, but uh, you never know when the, when the pain cave is going to hit. And I saw really weird stuff. 
after two nights of not sleeping, the leaves would just like kind of like take shape and just like come up and like like look at me and stuff. It was freaky deaky, man. I was calculating the time and, and how much I had to get to the next day station. And I said out loud, I was like, we can make it. I was like, wait, the, it's just me. Like, there's no we, like, why did I say that? And so I thought it was just like a, you know, maybe a Freudian slip, like that just, it just came out. And then later in the night, I said it again. Like I said, we can do this or something like that. And, and again, I was like, no. <laughs> He was so sleep deprived at that point. I think anything is possible. I pushed it too far this time. At some point, basically my conscious mind and my subconscious mind had a conversation. My subconscious mind said, we'll take over and you, you go to sleep and I'll, I'll keep running. I don't know what finally woke me up and I'm pretty sure I slept for two hours like that. And just like, I was just like slowly like hiking. Cause I left that aid station at like 11.07. And when I looked at my watch, it was like 2.04. So. I, I remember kind of being outside myself and seeing, seeing myself and thinking of the part of me that was running and making it happen was like a machine. And like, it was something different than me. And I was almost like admiring that. <laughs> And, and saying like, wow, it's really cool that this can keep happening and, I'm, and I can rest. Just to, even right now to think back on that, it's just really strange, you know. Exhausted and sleep deprived, Jason trudged on into the night. Just short of the Leadbetter aid station, the voices returned. Looked behind me and there were actually two headlamps. And I was like, oh, it's real. <laughs> and so it was, it was the sweepers. They're like, you can keep going with us to Blue Heron. You know, you're not going to make the cutoff, but you can keep going if you want. Realizing that he wouldn't be able to make the time limit, Jason drops out of the race after running 165 miles. Like, if I could have just, like, maybe just, like, gone to sleep at Duncan Hollow for, like, 30 minutes, then I probably would have been okay. Once he has decided that he needs to stop, it's over. Like, you have to honor that. Sometimes, like, an immediate reaction is relief, because, like, now we can all go to bed. <laughs> I was thinking about that yesterday. I was wondering if I, if I should have just uh, hopped in for the night stretch. But, I mean, just, I mean, there's no telling what his body's going through. I'm, I, I know that's probably, he'll feel disappointed, you know, but three nights of running, you know, it's. Absolutely incredible. Yeah, I'm, now I'm here for emotional support. I'll get a run in at some point this weekend. It's like. Busy. Hey, baby. Hey, baby. Come on, I'll go hard out. Just give me a grace. I'm gonna make that time go off. Yeah. I tried hard. Do you want to lay down in the back of this one, or do you want to just sit? We can talk all you want later. I meant to them. <laughs> Good job. Did you? I can't help but feel like I dragged everybody out of here for nothing. I'm thinking wanna... we were gonna beat you. I just didn't want to let you down. You're not letting us down. Well, I don't. You know, I don't want people to to worry about me. Like, I don't want, I don't want to put anybody out. You need to Sorry. drive if you want. <laughs> I, was, I was fighting so hard for you. I'm, I'm, I'm ready for the next one. Okay. I don't know, it's good to experience those, those really highs, but then like the, the lows also are really important too. You can't be successful without failure. You have to push yourself and have some failures to be able to meet those big successes. I mean, yes, this No Business 200 was a goal for him, and obviously he wanted to be successful at it, but ultimately his goal was to become a better at his sport. But believe it or not, I had fun. I believe it. Anytime that you're not able to finish an objective, you, you go back and think, well, like, you know, maybe I was just being a baby. Like I could have just 
you know, toughed it out and finished it. I think really like with this effort, there was like three major mistakes that I made. I definitely should have started the race at 10 a.m. I think that I should have had people with me the second and third night. Like I should have a, had a pacer on the second and third night. And then the third is I think I just should have like had had more clothing at night because it was just it was way colder than I anticipated. I think if I would have done those three things, I would have probably been successful. I'm proud of my effort. I ran 165 miles a lot faster than I had before. If I would have completed the race, it, it would have been a lot faster than my Bigfoot time. So I, I feel good about it. And I, I learned a lot about sleep deprivation and how, how far to push it. Like I pushed it too far this time. <laughs> what did I miss? What have you guys been doing? I feel like I've been on vacation since, what day is today? <laughs> Saturday. Saturday? Since Wednesday? Vacation, obviously. I think one thing that I've been focused on a lot recently is trying to enjoy the moment always. And I think that maybe that's the ultimate goal is just to, to all the time in your life be kind of okay and accepting with, with where you're at and what you're doing. You know? He'll want to do this again, definitely. Stay. Love you, love you. The Mountain. An hour and 15 minutes earlier uh, than you're supposed to. Yeah, be. Going. Tired, but still overall good. Everything's everything's still working. Why aren't you gonna be a star? Mm -hmm. Congratulations, man. Thank you. <laughs> you finished the first one. Yeah. I wish I have that. Your energy. I love all of you guys. Am I hurting you or? Everybody is. Everybody is. <laughs> Are you okay? Yeah, I'm good. But just keep breathing. I know. I do it every day. <laughs> when you get a second, can you stop filming me so I can take my clothes? I might need to do a chair nap tonight. We'll see. Sorry. Thanks, right. yes, everybody. Y'all have a good night. Okay. Right. Yeah, tomorrow. All right. Great night. Good job. 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 We had a great night. Gotcha. They said there was a bear that stopped yeah, everybody this. for like an hour. No. What? On the trail? Yeah. 
that on. station yeah. person. She goes, I won't see you back this. I was like, no, that's what that's what people say now. <laughs> Actually. Yeah. We changed it. That's what they we do. Changed. Mm -hmm. We changed it. Uh -uh. Sorry. That's all right. Yeah. And there's one more little hard section. You're on pace. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's just see what happens. There's a lot of flat stuff coming up. We're gonna do it. Uh, but it's my dude. Great run. That was awesome. Yeah. You want anything over here? Uh, I'm gonna go get a box like one episode. That's your last one. You got yeah. stung by something. Oh yeah. Make sure there's no fang marks. Yep. yep. All right. T minus four minutes. I think, I think, thank you. Good. You'd roll. Thank right. you. Don't make fun of the way I tie my shoes. gonna have these like special requests from here on out like hey can I do the no-no can I run it in both directions in one go if there's the, the interest I just gotta talk my wife into it <laughs> <laughs> how do you feel about the uh, potential for a no-no 200 can we get volunteers to be out here for five days and make call this the no-no if you do it in both directions the no-no. The no-no. Probably. I'll be here. Oh, you're in. Yeah, I'm done. I'm already here for five days. <laughs> yeah. Hey, but you I also like no-no. Hashtag no-no. You can, you, I mean, you.